Alex has alerted me. You are awake and ready for your day run down. Sierra, turn on the news. I am turning the office to Fox News HD as you requested. Won't run. What's different about the electorate and the... Good afternoon. I figured I would do another video of my home automation application. It's been about a year since I've done my initial video, so I wanted to go through and show uh, a lot of the changes that have occurred in that year period. Uh, we'll start off on our main status page. This is kind of the home panel you see uh, when you first load up the application. Uh, in the top left is a new section that has Kodi status, tuner status, as well as Plex status. All of my TVs run Kodi. Um, and if any media is playing on said TV, it will denote it here, whether it's in the living room, office, kitchen, or either bedroom. Uh, whether you're surfing the internet, looking at a YouTube video, uh, listening to an MP3, watching live TV or a movie, it will show what is being watched on that device. I also have an HD Home Run Prime uh, with three tuners, so if any of those TV tuners are in use, it will show you what channel is currently active. Uh, and lastly, at the bottom here, we have the Plex status, so if anybody is streaming uh, anything from my Plex server, it will show up here. Uh, some of the stuff that was existing on my prior uh, videos is some of the AC status. You can see the current uh, AC is currently turned off. It's 78 degrees Fahrenheit inside the house with 31% humidity, and at the bottom you can see the heating and cooling targets where the air conditioning or heat will turn on. Uh, in the top right corner, again, we have the security status, which will show whether uh, any of the doors are open, if any of the motion sensors are triggered, if the alarm is armed, disarmed, whether the chime is off or on, and currently if the garage door is open and closed. Uh, here at the bottom, we have the exterior status, which will show an icon for the current weather conditions, as well as an icon in the background that changes depending on the season, fall, summer, spring, winter, uh, and then the outside temperature and humidity. Moving down, we have the weather page. Again, this will show the current weather conditions, which is clear, the current outside temperature, as well as a brief description of today's weather, uh, including today's high as well as today's low. We move down to the bottom, and we have a couple of weather radars uh, for rain, um, as well as cloud formations. And to the forecast, we have a seven-day forecast, um, as well as a couple of the same uh, weather images from the first page and then an overall rainfall image for the week. Next we have the floor plan. Uh, this has had a couple of items added to it. As you can see I've been adding sensors throughout the home so you can see temperature of each room as well as if I move here in the office it should show up down on the bottom left that there is motion in the office and that that room is occupied. Uh, sadly, because my office runs a lot of the computer equipment, it is about 80 degrees in here, so it does stay a little bit warmer in the office as opposed to some of the other rooms. Um, it'll also show status of lights as well as which televisions are on in the house. So as lights go on, as people move throughout the house, as well as doors, if doors open, they will be lit up as those, op as those items occur. Uh, moving over into the computer status, this pulls from PRTG, which is a network monitor. It'll show which devices are having issues or unusual or warning status. Uh, it looks like currently my phone system is down, so I got to work on getting that back up. Um, I did also add uh, a network map, so you can see a quick overview of my network topology as well as any items that are in alert or any items that are currently down. Moving over to the events page, uh, this is pretty standard. This is one of the first pages I've made uh, for my home automation app. 
Uh, these controls basically control the living room lights. So movie mode will shut off all the lights in the living room. Subtle will turn all the lights to 50% in the living room. And bright will turn all lights maximum. The two bottom options, uh, night will turn all the lights off in the home except for the end table to 10%. And Night Secure does the same, but it arms the alarm system. On page two, we've actually started to populate some of these options. Uh, in another video, I will show you my speaker setup in the front living room. I have a set of RG, or, uh, white LEDs behind the side speakers and a relay connected to them. So this will turn those lights off and on, uh, as well as a set of RGB LEDs for the Ambilight. So it kind of extends the Ambilight beyond the TV. Uh, this option will turn those LEDs off or on. In the center here, we have game mode. Since my main media center does run Windows, we often play Steam games or Origin games on it. Uh, game mode on and off will turn off some of the unneeded items, such as the Connect voice recognition, uh, the Ambilight, other things that are not needed during gameplay that will take away from your frame rate. Game mode on, of course, will restart those services. I also added a timer uh, for one hour, two hours, ten minutes, or thirty minutes. You activate this and it'll set a timer, which will then alert you once that timer is up. I typically use this on my lunch break when I'm stepping away from lunch, from work. I can set a one hour timer, take a nap if I like, go throughout the house, do laundry, clean up, and it'll alert me when that timer is uh, lapsed so I can get back to work. Uh, moving over to the next page, we have the lights. So this is individual light control for each of the lights throughout the house. Uh, as I add lights, these fields will get populated. Um, but you can see uh, any light that does have a dimmer will have a slide bar, so you can slide those lights off and on uh, and adjust their brightness. As stated before, you can see the living room end table is set to 10% as it is currently in night mode. I have added a couple of additional lights to the bedrooms as well as the bathrooms, which you can see here. And then finally, I've started to populate the basement portion. Uh, I currently have one light in the basement right by the laundry room that's triggered by motion. So when, a, when the motion sensor for the basement is triggered, the basement light automatically turns on. Now the last main panel is the devices. Uh, this page will actually be retired soon. This is the access page for uh, garage door and entry. I had planned on originally adding the lock controls as well as garage door controls to this page, um, but there's just not enough to fill up the page and make it useful. Uh, a lot of wasted real estate. Currently there only is the garage door option here. This is getting removed and replaced. Moving over to the camera system, you can see the exterior cameras. Uh, these are full screenable, they're controllable, you can pause them. Uh, on the left hand side I do have a, a camera monitor in my living room. Uh, this left hand option will full screen those cameras. Uh, camera 1, 2, 3, and 4 will put those in full screen in the living room if you choose either of these options. On page two, this is still kind of a, uh, a beta kind of, I I'm still building it out I guess I should say. You really can't see. Uh, this is actually a camera inside the garage. You can kind of see the light reflecting off my car but the garage door is closed and all the lights are off. Uh, this will be a second page for some additional uh, cameras throughout the home. Moving on, we have the security panel. You can see um, it has several options such as chime, lockdown, which will actually lock down the entire home, uh, any door locks, uh, the garage door, those items, it will close everything and lock it down instantly. Uh, chime, of course, turns the chime in the house off and on. And then you can see I've moved the garage door to this panel as well. And once I get the morning link lock kit, these will be placed in the morning link lock kit uh, portion. Uh, at the bottom, we have our three arm and disarm options. Arm away for when you're leaving the home. Arm stay for when you're going to sleep or staying inside the house and want the uh, alarm to trigger when the doors are uh, opened. And then, of course, disarm. Uh, in the very center, you can see it cycles through uh, a selection of the cameras that I have throughout the house and the interior cameras, uh, as well as the exterior cameras, and then it has a description of the alarm status of the home. Moving on, we have the thermostat. This will be the full thermostat control, so you can turn the heating and cooling up and down. You can see your heating target as well as your cooling target on the main page. Uh, the thermostat is currently set to auto, so whenever it reaches one of these bounds, uh, it will turn on either the heat or the AC. Uh, of course, you can set it to just purely heat or cooling mode. Uh, you can adjust the fan or turn the entire system off. On the second page, we just have a quick 
uh, overview of the interior temperature and status as well as the exterior temperature and status so you can get a side-by-side -side comparison of what it's like outside as well as inside. Now for the main items, that is it on the main page. If you notice on the top corners, we have some admin buttons. We'll go ahead and go to the left-hand side first. Uh, this will be the Ambulite control, so you can turn off and on the Ambulite in the living room, uh, as well as change the capture mode. So we have video capture, music mode, uh, dynamic color mode, as well as static color. Uh, clicking that will give us the static color options of white, blue, red, and green. Uh, down below we have the forecast which will actually speak today or tomorrow's weather forecast. If I press these buttons the home automation system through all the media centers uh, pretty much in every room will read the weather forecast. Um, next we have current news headlines. Uh, this will show me news headlines from Fox News, CNN, as well as my local area. Uh, unfortunately CNN is currently not working right uh, so I do need to update this. This is an old headline. Um, but basically, as these sources change their um, top headline on their website, uh, I have a script that will go out, pull that information, and then populate it onto the news status panel. Uh, we also have a phone system control. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that. As we saw, it looks like my phone system is down. Uh, basically, this will open up an iframe inside the window with my home phone system where I can initiate web phone calls through the phone system. Um, next we have the admin panel. Uh, this is used for controlling some of the media center devices as well as uh, some of my services. Uh, you can see here for the living room I have an Xbox Connect running voice command as well as photos. Uh, Ambulite control so this will restart the Ambulite, this will restart the Xbox Connect, and then I also have an Alexa service uh, and this will restart the Alexa service. The same thing carries over into my office where I have an Xbox Connect as well as an Alexa service for voice control. Uh, clicking either of these will restart that service if either fail. Um, and then we have voice command, or uh, I'm sorry, volume controls. So this will mute the living room, uh, home automation portion, any speaking, any announcements, those kind of things. Um, and this will control the volume between low up to high. Same thing in the office. Um, I can mute the office media center, which also is part of the home automation system, uh, as well as go all the way up to full volume. The last two options, I run MB media server as well as Plex media server. If any of the services ever fail, um, which is very rare, uh, there is an option here to restart those on the server. So clicking this or this will actually restart Plex or MB on my main system. And then lastly, on the right hand side, we have media control. So this is kind of a universal remote for my TVs and media systems. Uh, unfortunately, I have retired Windows Media Center and I'm pure Cody now. Uh, this page will be getting modified uh, and if not possibly removed. Um, this does actually communicate directly with the Windows Media Center in the living room so these keys still function and still serve a purpose as well as the volume up and down controls the Onkyo receiver. So this still does serve a purpose currently until I decide to retire it. On the second screen we have the Kodi uh, MB controls. Uh, this will control volume, channel, um, as well as direction on any of the Kodi TVs. As you can see here it is set to the living room. We can choose the office. Now this remote will control the office kitchen, so on and so forth, and it basically just uses uh, API calls over JSON to communicate with Kodi and control each device. If you press the center button, you get a number pad for channel changing. And if we go back to the main screen and press our MB button, it will open up MB Media Browser in an iframe, which will allow me to choose what songs, what MB3s, what music, what TV I want to listen to. I can listen to it directly on the device I'm using as a remote control or I can use it to control uh, any of my media centers through Kodi and or DLNA. Uh, so I can pick a movie that I want to watch and then have it play on my media center in the kitchen, master bedroom, so on. Um, that basically just allows me to have a little bit better control over the media and, and what I want to pick and what I want to search for. Uh, we'll go ahead and close that. And that is it. This is the updated version of my home automation control app. It's all written in JavaScript, HTML, 
uh, and it does a lot of uh, uh, scripting and coding in the background to get all these systems to tie together. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, feel, please feel free. Let me know, uh, and I hope you enjoy the video.